Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Definitive Spells and Research Guide. The purpose of this guide is to introduce you to the finer points of the mod, explaining from start to finish how to make a spell. Hopefully by the time we're finished here, you'll have a better understanding on how to use the mod masterfully. Timestamps for sections will be in the description down below, as well as other important addendums. Firstly, what is the mod? The Spells and Research mod was released on Skyrim Nexus December 31st, 2016 by mod author Iron Dusk 33 with the intention of bringing a more hardcore role-playing experience for mages as he felt the vanilla experience didn't quite satisfy. The mod allows you to research spells down to their archetypical components, allowing you to take those components to make spells that you haven't yet received. It's an alternative way of gaining abilities other than buying spell tomes. With introductions in order, let's get started with Chapter 1, The Research Journal. The Research Journal is going to be the meat and potatoes of the mod. It's a primary tool in which you'll be producing spells from. Inside the journal are multiple sections that relate to each other for the ultimate purpose of spellcraft, so let's look into that, shall we? Firstly, how do you even get a journal? Well, there are a couple ways of doing so, either by finding them out in the world from spell vendors, book vendors, and general store vendors. A guaranteed way of getting a journal would be from the College of Winterhold. However, if you fail in getting a journal from these methods, the final method is to craft one yourself. In order to craft one, we're going to need a couple of items. First, we're going to need a tanning rack, or if you're playing the Ultimate Skyrim mod pack, we're going to need a crafting table. We're also going to need some leather and rolls of paper. And finally, we're going to need some linen thread if you're playing the Ultimate Skyrim mod pack. All these items can be found all over the world. Leather, for example, can be bought from local merchants and blacksmiths. And leather can be tanned from hides from hunted animals. Rolls of paper can also be found all over the world from merchants and vendors and inside dungeons. The Spells and Research mod also allows the crafting of rolls of paper with an Alembic, which we'll get into later on. For those who need linen thread in order to craft the journal, you'll need to get Northern Flax, which can be found outside Whiterun near the Hunting Brew Meadery. And a spinning wheel, the latter which can be found in the second floor of Dragon's Reach at Whiterun. Then once we have the research journal, we'll go to our miscellaneous item page and proceed to click on the research journal itself, upon which it'll activate, thus bringing us to the next step. So here we are in sub chapter 1.2, analyzing spells. So let's use a novice spell as an example to get ourselves started. For this, we're going to use Ice Wind. We're also going to equip Ice Wind to our right hand as if we were to dual cast it or even to use our left hand, we won't be able to analyze the spell. The mod won't allow it. So we'll just equip it to our right hand to start. Next, we want to go to our items here scroll all the way to our miscellaneous section here and then we want to go to our research journal click on that after a second or two we'll be inundated with a bunch of options here from our research journal we're going to ignore all of these and just start with analyze spell for now wait another second or two and here we'll get archetypes of the spell that we're researching these are all examples of, of archetypes here so we'll see that ice wind is a novice spell with concentration and destruction the spell also appears to be associated with frost and the spell appears to utilize aim techniques so what does this all mean well this information tells us that if we were to research this spell we'd unlock theses that would have the archetypes mentioned and gain novice ranked experience in all the archetypes stated Archetype experience is absolutely critical in crafting a spell. In addition, analyzing spells can drop some hints as to what theses we'll need if we were to pursue a similar spell. We'll get into all that later, but for now, we've analyzed a spell and understood what we'd gain if we were to research it. Speaking of such, on to research. So here we are in sub chapter 1.3, Research Spells. We've analyzed Icewind, which told us what we'd receive if we were to research it further, so let's do that, shall we? 
To begin, we'll equip Ice Wind, our example spell, in both our left and right hands. As doing so, we'll double the yield of Archetype experience that we'd receive. And more experience is always better. It's also possible to mix and match spells that you want researched. For example, if you want to equip a Destruction spell on the left and Illusion spell on the right hand, you'll gain Archetype experience in both. But for now, we just want to gain uh, double the archetypical experience from Icewind, so we'll do that. Next, we're going to open up our research journal by going into our miscellaneous page, going down to research journal, clicking on our journal, and then clicking on begin research. I'll give you a second to look at this. Okay. And we'll wait a couple seconds uh, for the mod to catch up with us here. And now that we've gotten our notes together, we can start researching. However, upon entering research mode, an investment of 50 Magicka must be made. While researching, your total Magicka will be reduced by 50 while in this mode. So make sure that your maximum Magicka is at least 50. You can find this debuff in the active passive spells up in the corner here. However, you can remove this research debuff simply by going to your items, misc, clicking on your research journal, and then clicking on the stop research button. And then as you can see here, the research debuff will go away and your maximum magicka will return. But for this, we want that, uh, <laughs> that debuff so we can do some actual researching. So we're going to reactivate this, begin research. Click OK. Wait until we get our no notes together here. All right, we got our notes. So now at this point, we can do one of two things. We can actively cast our spells here normally. Like if we were to walk around and, and get into fights, we can just do them normally like this. And we can gain archetypical experience that way. Why don't I just show that off to you right now? Scroll all the way down to our spells and research. I'll get more into archetype experience later. I just want to show this off to you. So as you can see, we've gained novice experience and concentration casting. And if you remember, when we analyzed Icewind, it did have the archetypes of our concentration. So every time we cast Icewind, part of those archetypes went into concentration and we gained novice experience adept experience and sorry apprentice experience and adept experience and if we go to the next page here it will be another example a frost and same thing some novice some apprentice some adept and so on and so forth so that's what you can do you can just play the game normally and just start casting spells and gain archetype experience that way However, there is another way to gain archetype experience, probably the most efficient way in my opinion, and that's doing actual researching with the book. So what you want to do is go to your items, misc, research journal, click on that. Now you want to perform research. Okay, so you get the option of researching for one hour, three hours, six hours, nine hours, or 12 hours. I go for 12 hours just to maximize the, the amount of research time. So let's just do that. And let's just watch. Time will go by as we uh, start researching here. Alright, so some way through your research you start losing focus and realize you're too mentally drained to continue. Which brings us to the next part, which is mental exhaustion. Now, mental exhaustion comes by every time you research a spell, study an artifact, craft theses, compose a new spell, make a scroll, or make a tome. It will also spend your total amount of magicka depending on the rank of spell researched for every hour that you research a spell until you run out of magicka while lowering your total magicka. This is on top of your research magicka debuff. However, this mental exhaustion can be removed very easily by si sl sorry. <laughs> simply sleeping for the amount of mental exhaustion divided by 10, give or take a few more hours. So basically, if you want to remove mental exhaustion, all you need to do is find a bed and sleep 
for like a full day if, if you want to keep it easy so with that being said uh we have talked quite a bit about uh, archetypes so why don't we get into that now So here we are in subchapter 1.4, talking about archetypes now. So we've just researched Icewind, but what did it do? Well, it gave us archetype experience, but what is archetype experience exactly? Archetypes are a separate experience system unique to the spells and research mod. Every time you research a spell, study or break ancient artifacts, translate ancient texts, read from an old grimoire, analyze your dissolved items in your glass alimic, or even read Shaldor's insights, you'll gain archetype experience from these items. Archetypes are many, too many to list here, but to keep it as simple as possible, archetypes are similar in concept to perk experience. For instance, if you were at level 1 and had no blacksmithing skill, you can't start making ebony armor right away. You need to level up first until you reach the perk or threshold that allows you to craft ebony armor. Archetype experience is kind of like that, in the sense that in order to compose a spell that you're missing from your spell pool, you will need to have a certain amount of archetype experience before you're allowed to have the spell. Archetypes are very critical to the success of spell composition. Without enough archetype experience, the pursuit of a new spell will have a greater chance of failing due to the player having too little experience with the archetypes necessary to craft said spell. Hopefully that makes sense. For example, like we've just done, we've researched Icewind and gained archetype experience based on the spell's property that we've analyzed earlier. So why don't we look into that now? So we go to our mod configuration page and then we go to um, uh, spells and research down to here. Click on experience. And we can see we have, I'm on page eight right now. So we can see that we have novice experience in destruction. And if you remember, we did analyze ice wind and it did have uh, the destruction archetype. And then we, we did research, we researched for uh, 12 hours and then all that sort of like uh, archetype experience that we gained from all that research went into here. So as you can see, we gained 210 novice experience and then 44 apprentice and nine adept experience right here. So what this means is as far as spell crafting is concerned, we'll probably be able to compose a different destruction spell that is also novice ranked because we have enough novice archetype experience available to us when crafting a novice destruction spell with a similar property as Icewind. For example, if you were to go pursue fire sparks, which is very similar to Icewind, We've gone over the threshold for any uh, novice rank destruction spell, but because we have very little apprentice archetype experience, we probably won't be able to compose any apprentice ranked spell, even if we have the appropriate theses, because our apprentice experience is too low. When in doubt, keep researching spells until your experience is high enough. Uh, good experience amount to shoot for would be a thousand experience in all ranks here however speaking of theses why don't we get into the next section here sub chapter 1.5 theses so here we are in sub chapter 1.5 talking about theses now now, archetype experience pairs hand in hand to theses. When you research a spell or unlock an archetype through other means, you also unlock its thesis. Theses are items used as ingredients for composing a new spell. However, just like alchemy potion making, the appropriate ingredients are necessary in order to get a specific spell, just like you would getting a specific potion. Hopefully this is making sense. So for example, if we were to be in pursuit of another uh, spell, we'd go to our miscellaneous, go to our research journal, click on that. Oh, let's stop research here. And then we want to compose thesis right here. This is kind of the start. Once you have all your um, experience available, once you're confident in your archetype experience, you go to compose thesis. I'll give you a second to read this. Okay, so now we can see all the theses we've unlocked from researching our ice wind from earlier. Okay, so 
it is possible to use these theses in composition of a new spell. Also, it is also possible to be able to compose a spell successfully, even if you don't have a lot of archetype experience by making a lot of the same thesis that would go into making a specific spell. However, this method isn't very economical due to the fact that the thesis and the rank that you make them at do cause paper rolls and also do give mental exhaustion and also do pass the end game time by 30 minutes just for the novice rank. So for example, let's just show it off here. We're going to just use up some paper rolls just to show off like how expensive it can get. So this would be a novice rank. So that's one paper roll and 30 minutes have passed. So let's do it again. Oh, we're going to make a master rank. Oh, we're going for a master spell, are we? So we're going to go make a master ranked uh, thesis here. So five paper rolls will be spent. And I think an inkwell as well, but it's not showing up for whatever reason. So two hours and 30 minutes have passed and you got a master frost thesis. Not that it would matter because we don't have enough like experience in, in master rank, any art in master rank archetypes. Sorry about that. So this was just a waste of paper and time and mental exhaustion. So I really wouldn't recommend though, just making a bunch of theses. I would highly recommend just doing a ton more research until you have a pretty healthy portion of archetype experience instead, because researching doesn't cost any paper to do, you know, the research. So on to the big part we've all been waiting for, composing a new spell. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here we are in subchapter 1.6, composing a spell. When composing a spell at this point, you want to think about what kind of archetypes your spell would have. For instance, fire sparks would have very similar archetypes to Icewind, for example. Sometimes, however, you may not know what specific spell you're pursuing, but do want a spell in destruction, for example. It is possible to receive a spell with just one appropriate thesis, assuming you have the appropriate amount of archetype experience in that thesis to receive it. I'll show examples of this later on with a higher level character, but for now, let's compose another novice ranked destruction spell. So here we go. Oh, well, first step is let's just review our archetype experience to make sure we have enough. Scroll down to spells and research and we'll go to our experience. So it's a good idea to review what experience you have before you even pursuit of a spell, because what will happen is the game or sorry, the mod will check to see whether you have like the appropriate amount of experience in order to get a spell if you don't have the experience you'll usually fail every time and that makes sense because if you have like zero experience why do you receive the spell so it's a good idea to review your theses or um your sort of archetypes which are tied to theses in order to see uh whether you have a good chance uh, of composing a spell or not so we got destruction spells here our novice experience is at 210 because we'll be in pursuit of another novice rank spell i feel like this is uh, a pretty good number in, in order to pursue a spell so we're gonna we're gonna assume that's okay and i'm also gonna assume the other archetypes the other theses are also pretty healthy as well so we're gonna move on from there next step after you review your archetype experience is we want to go open up our research journal okay click on that sorry and we want to go to compose thesis this is step two okay next we gotta think about okay so i'm in pursuit of a certain kind of spell what properties do i think uh this spell would have so fire sparks would be a destruction thesis for sure because it's a destruction spell so we're gonna click on okay so at this point what you want to do is click on the novice uh thesis if you're in pursuit of a of like a novice spell because what would happen is if you make say three master spells or three master theses and one other like lower thesis what end up happening you'll just get like a, a novice spell out of it if you are successful but that's not very efficient that just wastes time and paper paper rolls so if you're in pursuit of an apprentice spell an adept spell an expert spell a master spell or even a novice spell make sure all your theses are just the same rank it's it's overall cheaper to do so and, and doesn't really and it tells them the mod what kind of spell rank you're in pursuit of okay so make sure all the theses are just matching and they're the same quality okay so we're in pursuit of fire sparks they're all novice so we're going to click on that okay next step 
we're gonna click on destruction sorry uh concentration because if we remember we analyzed uh ice wind earlier and also had con concentration and fire sparks would also have concentration because it's very similar to ice wind so we're going to click on this as well and we're also going to click on aimed because fire sparks is an aimed spell as well and i think that should be okay maybe another destruction thesis because if you remember earlier if you do make multiple theses it will also increase your chance of getting the spell so why don't we click on one more okay that should do it maybe so next step we close that and we go back to our items go reopen our research journal here okay and now we want to compose a spell so we compose it i'll let you read this it's basically uh reiterating what i said earlier but it's good to uh reaffirm these things okay we're moving on next step so this is our research journal we want to go to our character right here go to our miscellaneous and we want to find our theses where are they so they're right here okay so now we just want to dump these into our research journal here okay they're inside we can review them say okay i'm satisfied with this so we can close the research journal press tab so what will happen is the mod will now use these theses and go through a check ah uh, we didn't get the spell here okay but basically what i was going to say what the mod will do is it'll take these theses and it will compare them to all the spells that have like the, the similar archetypes and it'll, then it will decide whether you get the spell or not through like a, a certain dice roll. It will also use your archetype experience as part of that dice roll. So right now we have lost a dice roll. We did not get the spell. So what we can do here at this point, we can sleep out of bed and try our hand again or we can do more research and to get more experience which will also increase our chances of getting a spell so what we will do here is i will rest at this floating uh bed right here do some more research and when i get back to you we'll try it one more time all right ladies and gentlemen so i did do some more research so let's just do a little bit of a review see our experience where we're at so i did another 12 hours of researching Icewind, and we did double our novice experience so we're try our hand again at getting the spell that we're in pursuit of so again open up your research journal okay oh stop research and we want to maybe compose a more thesis here so i'm going to pursue another destruction spell another concentration thesis another aimed thesis as well i'm hoping these amount of theses will overwhelm the mod and i will most definitely get the spell hopefully at this point so now go to your research journal go to compose spell okay we looked at that earlier go to our miscellaneous items page and then we want to find our theses so i got three novice destruction theses that's pretty good and novice aimed hopefully the mod will grace me with uh, a spell here so now we want to close the research journal again okay now the game or sorry the mod is going to go through all its checks and see whether i get the spell or not ah uh, okay damn it so I think at this point what you want to just do is just do sleep sleep for a couple hours and then try your hand again at doing uh, more research. We'll keep on doing this until we get a spell here. All right, finally. So we did finally get a spell. After much time and energy has been spent, you managed to create a new spell. You review your final composition, try to form the spell in your hands, and it blazes to life. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I'm also very filthy in the top left corner. I don't bathe. I just study all day like a, like a, like a student, like a real, real student here. So we're going to see what kind of spell that we got here after this weird bug uh, does what it needs to do. So, as you can see, we did receive Fire Sparks. This is the spell that we were in pursuit of. But what also happens is when you are successful in creating a spell, it the mod says, okay, so you are going to get a spell most definitely. It will now select within a pool of spells that match the theses, or sorry, the, the archetypes, the properties, that the spell would have so the other property sorry the other spell uh that would be similar to fire sparks and ice wind would be lightning sparks right so that would be also another spell i would receive and the reason why it's kind of vague and random that way is because we're actually missing a critical thesis 
that would be very specific in receiving fire sparks. And that thesis was uh, the fire thesis, right? And because we didn't have that fire thesis, it would give us a random chance of also getting lightning, uh, lightning sparks, because lightning sparks has very similar properties to ice wind. So keep that in mind when you're in pursuit of a very specific spell. The more specific the thesis is, uh, the greater chance you'll get the specific spell that you want. So keep that in mind. If you're very vague with your thesis, like, oh, I just want a destruction novice spell, give me whatever you want, then you'll get a random spell within the spell pool, assuming you're successful in um, composition. The mod says, yeah, you're going to get a spell here. So keep that in mind when in pursuit of a spell there. More specific, if you create more specific theses, you'll get a more specific spell. If you create vague theses that are just vague and you put them in the research journal, you'll get a, a random spell with those properties. I'll show examples of this uh, later on, probably right away, in uh, sub chapter 1.7, examples of composing spells. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so here we are on sub chapter 1.7 spell composing examples. For this example, we're going to be composing two spells, the first being Fireball, which is an adept spell and it will require a specific amount of theses in order to create, and the second spell being a random destruction spell, which will only require one thesis. So to begin, we're going to be reviewing our archetype experience in the spells and research mod proper, just to make sure we're not wasting our time trying to pursue a spell that we have no experience in. So. For this, we'll be using theses of aimed targeting and area effect for the fireball, and we also need to review uh, the or, or the, sorry the adept experience for each. So we can see it's at three thousand for aimed, and for the area effect, it's one thousand eight hundred. That's pretty good. And we'll go to destruction spells right here, and we can see the adept experience for destruction spells is over four thousand. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm pretty confident already. That's pretty pretty decent um where's fire i need the fire show me oh i passed it okay there it is so adept fire is over 3000 all right i'm not going to check the others there are some other theses i will we'll be using but i'm pretty confident they're uh, just as high if not higher than that so we're going to go to our research journal now and begin producing uh the theses necessary to compose uh, the fireball so We'll go click on aimed, okay, and we're gonna go to adept, okay, because we're in the pursuit of an adept spell here. Okay, and then area effect, because fireball is an area effect spell. And then we go to destruction here, because obviously fireball is a destruction, and fire and forget, adept, and fire, and adept as well. Okay, so those are all the theses we have created that we'll need in order to pursue the fireball spell here. Go back to our research journal, okay, and we'll go to compose spell click OK again go to our character here and then we're gonna just dump all the theses we just created back into the research journal here so we have five of them or at least we should so we got the aimed area effect destruction fire and forget and fire okay I'm pretty confident that we will be getting uh, the fireball spell here those are pretty accurate theses for fireball so the mod is just running here it's going through its dice rolls its checks and look at that we did get the spell blazes to life that's the keyword that i'm looking for and we do have a uh, have uh, saved some extra theses according to this little uh, section here so we we've got the spell we got the spell and now we're going to go through a weird little bug glitch thing here where we'll just teleport i don't know why it does this it's strange it's a strange one but we'll let it do its thing and when we uh, do get back, we'll just check out the fireball just to show off that. And yes, indeed, we did get the fireball spell. All right, so we're back in it. So magic, and here we are, fireball. We, I'm not going to cast it in here because people might be running around and, and I don't want to cause any trouble. So we're not going to do that. But we will be heading into the, the next little part within this section here is creating the random uh, destruction spell. So let's get into that now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are back at Riverwood. So we're going to be in pursuit of the next sort of spell here, but let's go back and review our uh, spells and research just to see how much archetype experience um, 
that we have for the spell we're pursuing. And the spell that we're pursuing is going to be a random apprentice destruction spell. So let's go to page eight because that's where destruction is located. Very quickly like bunnies. It gets, it's pretty slow turning the pages here. So here we are, destruction spells and we're look at apprentice. That's pretty healthy. I'm pretty confident in these numbers and that's all we need. That's all I wanted to look at because we're in pursuit of a random destruction spell that is apprentice rank remember so we're going to open up a research journal again and compose a thesis here so find a destruction thesis click yes and we're going to click on apprentice and you know what just to increase our chances here i might want to make even more theses here hopefully that helps okay so i feel like three theses should be enough to uh, bring us over the edge now we want to just compose a spell Go here, and where are we? There we are. Uh, apprentice uh, theses. Okay, we got three apprentice destruction theses. Press tab, close, and now the mod is going to run. It's going to do all its little dice roll, dice rolls, and its little checks. And look at that. We did get in another spell, lightning jolt, and it blazes to life. And we even kept some papers with us. How nice! And now the mod will do this weird little glitch thing. I don't know why it's a thing. <laughs> okay, I have no idea why it, it keeps doing this. It's very strange to me. So, when I do uh, come back in here, you'll probably have noticed that I do have the fireball. Okay, but you also probably have noticed, well, the cost of fireball is 186. So if we review my uh, sort of magicka here, like obviously it would be a little bit higher, but I think my full magicka is around like maybe 125. Okay, now obviously that isn't enough to cast even one fireball. So, uh, thanks to the mod, how we can solve this is by making scrolls, which brings us to the next section, uh, 1.8. Scroll crafting and tome crafting. So let's get into that now, shall we? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are in sub chapter 1.8, scroll crafting and tome crafting. This part is much easier to understand than the others, so we'll be quick here. Scrolls allow the player to cast a spell without expending magicka at the cost of using up a spell scroll. They can be quite useful, especially if the mage is too low level or too low magicka to be casting high level spells with efficiency. Not only that, scrolls can be sold, making a little money on the side. Let's make some using our newly crafted high level spell that we made earlier. So, first things first, you want to go to your magic. Okay, let's get rid of that. But let's say I want fireball. That's a good spell. So you want to equip your, your spell on the right hand first. Next step, go to your research journal. Okay. Now you want to go click on craft scroll. So crafting a scroll will take a lot of paper. So be sure you have a lot of paper in stock before you craft a scroll. And to craft a scroll, you'll be inundated with this information here. You need a spell in your right hand like we just did. You also need a quill, ink, and paper like we just said. And you also need mental energy. Also note when you do craft a scroll, it will cause some mental exhaustion. So be aware of that when you craft scrolls. And now we have all this information inside our minds. We will click yes. As you can see in the top left, we use up six paper rolls. Three hours have passed, but we have made a scroll of fireball. Very nice, very nice indeed. So I'll show that off right now. So here we go. Scroll that fireball. Equip that to our left hand and we'll cast it like so. And as you can see, no more scroll. So that's crafting scrolls. So what do we do when we are craft a tome? We'll we'll do that as well. We'll show that off. Very simple. What you want to do is again, oops, select spell that you want. Let's say icy shard. Let's put that on our right hand, okay? And go to your research journal, okay? Craft tome. Make sure you have paper and magic, uh, magicka available, and you're not so mentally exhausted before you craft a tome. Make sure you're all tickety booed there. But we are, we're pretty good to go, so we'll craft a tome right now. So you can read this. It's basically reiterating what I just said. Click yes. Another uh, four hours will go. Six paper rolls and spell tome icy shard received. So what does a spell tome do? You're probably asking. Well, I haven't really found a use for it, but. Depending on what kind of mod you're running, you can sell it for uh, quite a bit of scratch, so keep that in mind. 
Other than that, I haven't really found a use for it other than selling. But with that being said, ladies and, and gentlemen, those are the two ways of like crafting a scroll and crafting a tome using the spells that you have. But that will be the conclusion for chapter one, the spells and research journal. Now we will be heading to chapter two, the glass of limbic, and we will be uh, learning all about that. So I'll see you in a bit here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are in chapter two, talking about the glass and limbic now. Another big, but not as big as the research book itself, is the glass and limbic. The purpose of the glass and limbic is twofold to provide an alternative way of getting archetype experience and to provide unique ingredients that can be used for potion making and poison making. You can find alembics at apothecaries or craft them yourself at a local blacksmith. Some spell vendors may sell them as well. They can also be found in the world in special areas such as a college or winterhold. Luckily for me, however, I already have an Olympic in my inventory, so we can get started right away. It will get started in subchapter 2.1, Dissolve Items, so let's get into that right now. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so here we are in subchapter 2.1 talking about dissolving items in the limbic now. So once you receive your limbic, you just want to activate it in your inventory like so by left clicking. And they will be inundated with three options here. Dissolve items, analyze solutions, and mix ingredients. To begin this part of the mod, you just want to begin by dissolving items. Okay, and I'll give you a second to read this here. Alright, moving on. So... Here we are in the limbic. You just want to go to your character sheet right here, and now you'll be allowed to put in certain kinds of items inside the limbic to dissolve. You can put in potions and poisons. You can put in any kind of ingredient here. You can even put in unique items you unique to the mod itself, such as these filled soul gems, and even uh, Daedric artifacts after you complete their quest line can be dissolved as well so for an example here we're going to dissolve a single ice wraith essence here okay and once you're sort of satisfied with the item you want to dissolve you just want to press tab okay and then the mod will run and as you can see you will receive some solutions and the items that you do put in will give you uh, the same kind of solutions every time. So why don't I do an, another example here with some, uh, say, maybe Potion of Fire. Okay, oops. Oops, I wasn't in the Limbic. You can get kind of confused a little bit if you do this enough times. So so let's put in, uh, the Potion of Fire Resist just to show this off. So we're going to put that in there, and the mod will run, and we'll get Morlag Sagora. Uh, this is an Aeliad, uh, apparently. Uh, that's why that's why the language seems so weird. And now we're going to put it in again, okay? Just to show off that you do indeed get the same solutions. So if you're wanting to master the, the Limbic, it's a good way to sort of learn and memorize what sort of dissolves into what. So we're going to put this back in here and we're, we're, we're sorry we're gonna get the same uh, solutions there as you can see so also I, I need to make this a, a point of addendum for you the limbic can only dissolve a certain amount of items so I cannot put in say for example 54 blue mountain flowers and expect that to dissolve okay so in order to solve this what we do is we use an iron cauldron if we want to dissolve a huge amount of material all at once we want to use an iron cauldron and an iron cauldron is pretty easy to get you get one at a blacksmith uh, by crafting one it only takes a couple of uh, iron bars to do so and once you do get one you just want to click it on your inventory like so and then place it on on the ground and then it will appear in front of you so once you do have that iron cauldron placed in front of you you just want to walk up to it and then press e to activate okay and then at that point you'll be inundated with uh, three options here add fuel dissolve items and take cauldron to um, play around with the cauldron you need to add fuel first before anything else okay i'll give you a second to read this Okay, moving on. So if you did read that, it's basically telling you you need to add potions, uh, poisons, or ingredients that have the weakness to trait. So the easiest uh, fuel that I've discovered was salt. 
because salt's pretty uh, plentiful out there in the world. You can get them in barrels and, and from innkeepers. So salt is a pretty good fuel source. And as you can see, the salt does have weakness too, which counts as a fuel. So we can dump as much fuel as we want inside the cauldron like so. And once we're satisfied with the fuel amount, we can just press tab. And after a couple seconds here, uh, the anther will walk in front of me. But after a couple seconds more, we will notice that our fuel was 55.6. So at this point, we have the fuel in there. Now we can dissolve items. And now we can dissolve as many items as we, as the fuel would allow, I would say. So what do we want to dissolve? Let's say maybe some potions, uh, poison, sorry. Maybe uh, the fire, maybe some crude this. Uh, maybe some other stuff uh, does it really matter at this point and maybe some fuel uh, filled soul gems and th these are the items that we've put in now all this will dissolve into solutions and once you're satisfied with the things you want to dissolve you can just press tab again at which point the mod will run and you'll start getting a bunch of uh, solutions there okay so well, how do you back away from a cauldron? Uh, you just press S or D or whatever, and that will back you away. Or you can press E again, and that will deactivate as well. And what if you want to pick up the cauldron? Well, you just backed away. Just go back to it. And then you want to go up and then press take cauldron. Now, note, if you still have fuel inside the cauldron, if you do take the cauldron, that will waste the rest of the fuel. You will not get it back. So make sure this is what you want to do if you have a fuel in. Okay? So for me, I'm just going to leave the cauldron there because I like it right there. Okay? I like it there. Oop, nothing. And then we're just going to move away back away so we were talking about uh solutions earlier so why don't we get more into that and how to analyze them shall we all right ladies and gentlemen so here we are in sub chapter 2.2 analyzing solutions now with the limbic to begin you just want to go to your glass limbic down in your inventory here and then proceed to click on it and then click on analyze solutions like so I'll give you a second to read this right here. All right, moving on. So now we just want to take the solutions um, that we've just made by dissolving ingredients and items uh, of, of various things. And then we want to proceed to put it inside the limbic itself. So let's say, for example, we just put in this one uh, random solution here. And then after you're done that, after you're satisfied, you just want to press tab and that'll run the mod and then you'll gain some arch type experience that is directly associated with the solution itself this isn't random here it is uh, directly associated with the solution so why don't i give another example here so let's say for example i want i'm, I'm looking for a, a certain kind of uh, arch type let's say from this one solution here so we put that in there as a test press tab and let's say involving life okay yeah i'm in the pursuit of more uh, life arch type here so now you can just start dumping in uh go back to my glass olympic here so you can start dumping uh this alamus or alamus oh my god i can't pronounce that or anything but you know what i'm talking about so you can start just putting in as many uh alamuses and you'll start getting a, a ton of arch type experience with that uh one arch type from that one solution and this is stackable obviously so if you put in say a uh, hundred alamuses you'll obviously get a, a like a ton of arch type experience there so why don't i just show that off right now oops show that off in the spells and research where are you where are you there you are so um i think it's page four life so we have life right here and we'll have 22 novice experience so if we start dumping a ton of that uh aliumus i can't pronounce it again i'm sorry okay just the rest of that aliumus we should gain a quite a bit more okay so we press tab again that will run gain a minimal amount involving life and then we go back we should gain a lot more well a lot in in relation to the limbic itself obviously um researching would be a lot quicker but anyways so as you can see we went from like what was it like 11 all the way to 39 that's not bad uh, considering we're just dumping uh potions or sorry solutions in inside the limbic there so 
that is uh, one other way to gain archetype experience. And again, I want to reiterate the solutions are related to the archetypes. It's not random. Okay. And you can obviously gain archetype experience from that. So this will bring us to sub chapter 2.3 mix ingredients. So why don't we get into that now? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are in sub chapter 2.3, talking about mixing ingredients now. So I have gone on ahead and produced a ton of solutions because for this part of the glass and limbic, you want a ton of solutions in order to mix ingredients with. And once you do have uh, your solutions, you just want to select your glass and limbic like so, and then click on mix ingredients. I'll give you a second to read this. It's just going uh, through what we'll be uh, talking about uh, right now. So we're gonna be clicking on that. And next you just wanna click on the apple here or the food section. And if you have uh, the appropriate solutions, you'll gain access to a bunch of elixirs. This is the primary purpose of this part of the, the glass limbic is, is creating these unique sort of uh, ingredients that you can use for potion making. Now. Initially, these elixirs will produce somewhat weaker potions than if you just used regular ingredients. But if you do stick with this part of the mod and you're very good uh, at alchemy, like a rank 100 master alchemist, you can produce very strong, very powerful, very potent uh, potions using these elixirs that can be way stronger than uh, the potions that you would have gotten if you just used regular uh, Skyrim ingredients. As you can also see here, you can also produce salt. So if you need fuel, you can uh, use Aurelis. I can't pronounce any of this stuff, but you can use that sort of stuff right there. You can also produce your own solutions. I'm not going to pronounce this. For this part of uh, the, the glass limbic, I'm sorry to report you're pretty much on your own. I have, I have not put in that much time and energy into wrapping my head around uh, this part of the mod. I'm sure you can understand why though. But you can also produce uh, very powerful other things as well, such as uh, frost salt. Uh, uh, fire salts and glow dust. Uh, I think void dust is in here somewhere. Also ink wells you can also produce if you need your own ink well for example. Very easy to make. You just need more Sagora and uh, some some charcoal or whatever. I think there is void dust in here somewhere. Or uh, am I crazy? Oh and you also can create uh, paper rolls as well with just some more Sahala and some wood if you want to do that. You can make a ton of paper rolls, which are uh, obviously, if you remember earlier, are very critical to uh, composing spells, right? So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, why don't we just produce a potion using uh, an elixir here. Uh, which one? Uh, maybe a green one. I don't know. Green, I think, is good or something. I don't know what any of this does. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not that versed in, in this part of the mod. My apologies. But we will show off the, the very basics of it. So I'm going to make a very mild potion using this uh, diluted elixir. It's going to make a very weak potion. Weaker than, um, again, using just simple alchemical ingredients. But we will do so just to show it off. So what did I make here? Oops, I, oh, I forgot the other step. I forgot to even like eat it or swallow it. So it will be in your inventory now. As you can see, the diluted uh, elixir. We just want to click on that and that will reveal one property, the restore stamina. And then what we want to do then is go to alchemical station and we'll find um, a restore stamina. I'm using a different mod. Okay, if you're experiencing something different obviously it'll be different for you but now we can use the elixir as part of our alchemical ingredients but as you can see what you receive is something that would overall be much weaker than if we were to just use um regular alchemical ingredients but they do get stronger over time but again we're just going to show this off here and we're going to make a restore stamina potion that will store only seven stamina over the course of zero seconds and we'll show that off where are we stamina potion the seven seconds one there it is right there so ladies and gentlemen that will uh, conclude chapter 
2, we'll be heading into chapter 3 next, so we'll see you in a bit. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in Chapter 3, Artifacts, Ancient Texts, Old Grimoires, and Shalador's Insights. Let us begin with Artifacts to start. Artifacts are items that can be used as another way to gain archetype experience. They are found all over the world, from vendors, rogue mages, and even in chests. There are two ways to gain archetype experience from an artifact, either by studying the artifact, which will give less archetype experience, but may be studied multiple times, assuming you're skilled enough in enchanting. Also, studying the artifact requires iron tongs, which can be crafted at a local blacksmith. The second way is to break the artifact. This gives a greater amount of archetype experience, but guarantees you break the item. It requires an iron hammer, which can be crafted at a blacksmith as well. So, here are some examples of artifact items. We have ancient sort of weapons here, enchanted broken weapons, and we also have filled soul gems. So let's start with maybe a weapon here, just to show it off. So you'll be inundated with three options here. I'm not counting nothing as an option. Analyze item is a good place to start. So there appears to be one identifiable secondary archetype imbued in this item. So this little hint here is deferring to if you were to study the artifact. Um, this information is uh, irrelevant to you if you plan on breaking the artifact because when you break an artifact, you only have access to the primary archetype imbued in the weapon, not the secondary. So this is relevant information if you're planning on studying the secondary uh, properties of the weapon. Okay, so we're going to move on from here. Press OK. So another hint here is with the item in your hands, you feel slightly reinvigorated. This is dropping you a hint on what kind of archetypes uh, would be uh, within the weapon, the, the secondary archetype there. So we're going to press OK now. Next, we're going to study the item. So like I said earlier, you can study the item and uh, what you'll get is less archetype experience, but you'll be able to study it multiple times if you're lucky and it doesn't break. So you can read this. You can spend a few hours studying this item and the mechanics and effect it has. Due to the spells, you will be casting on the item. You acquire tongues safely. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so we're going to click yes here. So which adds aspects of this item do you want to study primary properties are inherent to the base object independent on what enchantment or other effect it has so it's basically if you were to ignore that it's an enchanted weapon it's basically a sword and what do sword what are swords well they're weapons so, and that would be an archetype and it would be uh steel i think steel is also an other archetype as well and that would be the primary properties inherent to the base object so secondary properties are due to what enchantment or other effects are applied to the item okay so these are other things that would be like like uh, if it had a fire archetype uh, at some point that sort of thing so at this point, once you sort of have an understanding uh, on what this is, you want to pick either you want to study the primary properties or the secondary properties. Secondary properties would defer back to uh, analyzing the item where it said, oh, you feel slightly invigorated. So if you were to study secondary properties, you'd be touching base with that slightly invigorated arch type there that uh, the analyzing was dropping hits on, uh, hints on. So I think we will study secondary properties because that seemed a little bit more interesting. Okay, we'll study that. Okay, so you grab a research journal and jot down what you manage to understand. So this is a message that you'll get every time you study a spell. So don't really worry too much about this. We're just going to click on OK. So we're going to use up that ancient, uh, that's that, sorry, that enchanted steel axe. And what will happen, what will happen is unfortunately there's not going to be a pop-up where it tells you what archetype the experience that you gained i think it's a little bit of a, a bug there but if you do look in your uh, experience your archetype experience you'll find that you have gained some experience in some things i'm pretty sure it's restoration or it could be health uh either or one of the two might be restoration come on Hmm. Might be stamina. 
Could be stamina. I'm not really sure. I mean, being <laughs> reinvigorated could uh, apply to a lot of things. Might even might be stamina. Actually, I'm pretty sure that it is stamina because look how low our stamina kind of is. So we did study the artifact and we did gain some stamina experience there. I I'm pretty sure that's what it must mean. Defer to. So you can gain stamina archetype if you like there. Let's uh, do it one more time. Also, I should make mention while we're here, every time you do study an artifact, you will gain magic exhaustion, sorry, mental exhaustion there. So be aware of that when you're planning on studying artifacts. So we're gonna do it again one more time, and this time we're going to study the item, actually twice more, and we're gonna do primary properties, okay? So we're just gonna do that. So this will give us the primary properties of the weapon. Again, the same message will appear here. Now you just want to go to mod configuration just to see what it is you have actually gained here. Okay, we go to spells and research, go to experience, and I think it's on page 8 actually. Yeah, so it's weapons. So as you can see, we gained a 215 novice experience, adept 46, master 10, that's not bad, uh, apprentice 100, and expert 21. So that's just from starting the item once. So. That's pretty good, so we'll do it one more time just to show off the breaking of the item. Okay, so we're going to do it again. So you're probably wondering, well, does every item have the same sort of secondary property? Well, no. Some of them don't. So as you can see here, when you pick up, you almost instinctively drop it due to a burning sensation. While it doesn't seem to be doing any damage to your hands, your the item feels like it's eating away at your flesh. So this would be implying that it has like the fire trait. So at some point in its life, the artifact had uh, fire abilities. So fire enchanted weapon. Okay, but we won't be studying that. We don't need extra fire enchanted stuff or fire arch types because we have a ton of that. But we will break item because we want more uh, weapon arch type. So what's going to happen is when we break the item, we'll gain more arch type experience for weapons than we would if we were to study it. So we're going to click yes. Okay. And that item will be broken. Okay, so that's done. We did that. Now let's go back to spells and research. Where are you? There you are. And go to experience. And as you can see, a huge, huge leap that we that we would have wouldn't have gotten if we were to just study the item again. So that's quite significant. So you can decide whether or not you rather just have the primary properties or the secondary properties of a weapon, an enchanted weapon. So the other items, obviously soul gem fragments, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, so you can analyze the item. You get three uh, identifiable secondary art types imbued in this item. That So that would mean it's kind of worth your time. Even holding it close to fire. Okay, so it's chilly. It's chilly. That's what it would. So it has ice, and it probably has other properties that's not telling us as well. So you, it's probably worth your time then to even study the secondary properties since you're getting so many uh archetypes tied to the item itself you, it may be worth your time there why not let's do secondary properties and see what we get here as you probe and you grab the research journal da, 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 da. yeah same thing so we got the, the broken filled soul gem fragment there so go back to your spells and research and i'm not sure what properties that we actually gained i think it was cold cold stuff where are you Show me the frost, or it could be frost, that too. Oh, metal, yeah. Metal is tied to the weapons as well, because that makes sense, because weapons are made out of metal. So I think we did gain some frost. I haven't really reviewed, but there it is. Those are the ways you can use the artifacts, okay, uh, to gain archetype experience, either by breaking the item or starting the item and studying either its primary properties or the secondary properties. Honestly, if it's up to me, if you're going for the primary properties of an artifact, regardless of what that is, it's probably better to just break it than it is to um, study the primary properties uh, if you don't have enough uh, enchanting experience. Because if you do have high enchanting experience, there's a chance you'll be able to study it again and potentially gain more archetype experience over the long term by just studying it over and over and over again versus just breaking the item. However, if your enchanting is very low 
and you want the primary properties of an artifact, it's better off to just break the item. However, if you want the secondary properties of an artifact, it's better to study the secondary properties of the artifact, obviously. So that will be sub chapter 3.1 artifacts. So let's head to sub chapter 3.2 ancient texts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are in subchapter 3.2, talking about ancient texts and translation tomes. Ancient texts are old tomes that contain archetype experience. They're found mostly in ruins, chests, on rogue mages, and on vendors as well. They can be studied by using a translation tome, which can also be found in vendors, chests, rogue mages, and there's a chance they can be found on Urag Gru Shrub of the College of Winterhold. As of right now, however, there appears to be a bug with only three translation tomes available despite having six types of ancient texts. For now, I'll use a translation tome and an ancient text that correspond with each other as an example. So we'll open up our mix page right here, our miscellaneous, and we're going to click on this ancient text right here because I know what it's about. So, but for you, if you come across an ancient text, here's what you want to do. We want to click on that ancient text and click on analyze text. So you'll be inundated with this little blurb here. So this blurb is going to give you a hint on what translation tome you will need in order to translate this particular ancient text right here. Luckily, however, I do have the appropriate translation tome available with me. And like I said, there are only three translation tomes available because there is a bug with the mod, unfortunately. So the three translation tomes available are the Iliad, the Duermeris, and the Yuko. So that ancient text that we used uh, would be an Iliad uh, ancient text. So we're going to click on the translation tomes and how we know we have the proper translation tome for the ancient text is that the writing styles for the ancient text and the translation tome will be pretty much the same. So as you can see here in this little blurb here, on glancing at the text, the characters appear to be rune-like but are not completely straight. The shapes curve at the edges and each character appears to be written in a single stroke. So let's remember that and let's compare. So again, it's pretty much the same text here. On glancing at the text, the characters appear to be rune-like, yada, 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 same sort of message. So that tells us that we do have the proper uh, translation tome, I was going to say ancient text, the proper translation tome to translate this specific ancient text here, which we'll now do so. So this message will tell you that if you do not have enough enchanting experience that you're probably going to break the object after you're done translating it so be aware of that so we're going to click yes because we don't really care you managed to translate just a few passages of the ancient text but this small amount grants some invaluable important insights okay so we gain some random arch type experience on summoning spells so the ancient text will give you just like random arch type experience okay every time and this message is going to just tell us that we broke it so as you can see it's broken so the other corresponding uh, text right here is Dwemaris. So as you can see, uh, it appears to be composed of runes, straight lines drawn, and geometric angles. So we're going to find the ancient texts that correspond with that translation text. My goodness, text, text for ages. So that's not it right there. Uh, okay, so it's this one because it's pretty much the same. Let's just do a review just for old time's sake. So as you can see, same message there for this particular ancient text. Same one. Same one. So we're going to, oh, we're going to translate this one. Okay. And we're going to get some valuable insights on it. Okay. Minimal amount of knowledge on pacifying spells. Okay, great. That's, that's a-okay with me. Okay. And then it breaks. So for the Yuko, so yada 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 yada, I'm not going to read through all that, basically literary music, this is the keyword that I'm looking for, so which one was it, I think it was this one, yes, sort of literary music. Okay, so we do have the translation tome that corresponds with this particular ancient text here, so we're going to attempt to translate. And reading a few passages, regain courage, lots of courage in that one, awesome. So because we are bad at enchanting, it will break. Here are the other ancient texts. As you can see, they're all different, but like I said, you do not have the corresponding translation tome available to you. So these are all uh, 
junk, <laughs> unfortunately. Or maybe if you have enough enchanting experience, you can sort of still attempt to translate. Who knows? Uh, let's go for it. Yep, I failed that I get and gain nothing. So you do probably need the translation tome in order to translate the ancient text. However, that will be ch chapter 3.2, ancient text and translation tomes. So we're going to talk about subchapter 3.3 next, talking about the old grimoires. So that will be very interesting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are in sub chapter 3.3, talking about old grimoires now. Old grimoires are old tomes that contain very powerful magics. They can be found in chests inside old ruins run by rogue mages, as well as powerful rogue mages themselves. They can give high ranked theses to a large amount of archetype experience from a random archetype and even a brand new spell to add to your repertoire. So let's go through it right now. I have an old grimoire with me. So you'll be inundated with this message here. Basically, this message is just giving you some warnings and what to expect from the, the, the old grimoire. So you'll be given three options here. View lightly, read fully, study intensely. So when you view lightly, you will be given one random spell that you don't have already, usually. Usually. If you read fully, you will be, be given one high level thesis, usually. And if you study intensely, you will be given a random chunk of archetype experience, usually. And it will be a pretty massive chunk as well. So, however... Like, like it, uh, it's been warning you here, every time you use one of these three options, there's a chance you might trigger the Grimoire's traps. These traps can range from losing a spell to losing maximum magicka permanently to destroying the Grimoire, or even worse, it might even be causing, might cause your death. So be warned every time you use a Grimoire. You can also use a Grimoire as many times as you like. However, again, every time you use a Grimoire, you'll trigger, you might trigger one of the traps here. So let's go through the whole grimoire right now and hope you don't trigger any traps here. So we're gonna start with view lightly here. So the mod will just run here. Hopefully we get a spell. There we go, we got a brand new spell, Ice Wind. Yes, Na uh, a random spell, how nice, how nice for that. Very good, very nice. So we'll go through it again two more times. So we're gonna read it fully now. Any second. All right, so we got a brand new thesis, a very powerful one. Master Mortal Thesis. I think I saw that. Uh, did I see that? Did my eyes... Yep, Master Mortal Thesis. Wow, that is very strong. How nice. How nice of uh, the mod to give us a nice thesis there. So we're going to click on it for the final time. Study intensely. Hopefully we don't trigger a trap here. So the mod is just going to run. And shit, we did trigger a trap and the Grimoire has turned to ash in our hands. However, detect- oh, and we also lost a spell, detect life forgotten. That's no good. Uh, son of a bun. I oh, God, so that was one of the traps. It was actually good that we could show that off here. And we also did lose the Grimoire. So that was the final bitter curse for that. However, if we d were successful- and studying intensely, we would probably get a big chunk of random archetype experience and a random archetype. So we're not really missing out on too much information there. We already know what we would have received. So that would be sub chapter 3.3, talking about old grimoires. We're going to be heading to the sub chapter 3.4, talking about Chaldor's insights next. So that will be exciting. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in sub-chapter 3.4, talking about Chaldor's Insights now. Chaldor's Insights is a scroll that you'll receive upon the completion of the quest Chaldor's Insights that you can get when talking to Ura Grushrub of the College of Winterhold about wanting any special books for him. From there, retrieve the book from the quest area and give it to Urag. After a few days wait, he'll give you a few translated pages of Shaldor's insights that will give a specific kind of random archetype experience. 
To activate, all you have to do is go to your misc page and scroll down to where you'll find Shaldor's Insights, which will be right here. It doesn't necessarily have to be Destruction, it could be on something else. And then simply click on it, in which case the mod will run, and then after a moment or two, you'll get a random amount of Arch-type experience. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude the Spells and Research to Definitive Guide. Hopefully, this video has relieved you of the confusion found within the mod, or at the very least, made it less headache-inducing. The mod is highly resource-intensive in order to make proper use out of it, requiring plenty of materials. However, if you decide to invest your time and patience, you'll be able to use spells well above your level, becoming a master spell researcher, maybe even surpassing Shaldor himself, eh? So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I do like to thank you for watching the video. And if you like videos like these and want to see other videos like them, be sure to like and subscribe. If not, I understand. So I'd like to thank you all for wa watching once again. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.